Welcome to BNews Weekly Special Report. I'm Phil Gallagher, and my guest today is Joyce Variotis. Welcome, Joyce. Thank you very much. One of the many functions that Joyce has is to be the Deputy Director of the Cummings Foundation, William Cummings uh, Foundation over in Woburn, Massachusetts, which we are quite familiar with at this point, uh, having uh, interviewed Bill's on his book, which uh, was interesting for a number of us since uh, I don't think any of us knew he was a billionaire until he came out. <laughs> I, I think you're right. A he lot of people out. were very surprised. Yeah. You know, great. Uh, uh, tell a quick story. Uh, Bill flies in when he joins the pledge, and we'll talk about that. He flies into Vegas. He rents a car. He goes to the hotel, and the concierge asks him, uh, what, what's your tail number? And <laughs> Bill's... Bill doesn't know, you know, and the guy says, well, you know, the tail number on your plane. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bill comes in so let's start from the beginning. How did you become interested and then subsequently become deputy director of the Cummings Foundation? Well, I was actually hired by Cummings Properties to uh, help out with writing, to write media releases, and that's how I got my foot in the door. I really wasn't that familiar with Cummings Foundation, and so I started doing writing for the organization. Bill cares quite a bit about writing, so he and I started working together on various writing projects, and I happened to be in the right place at the right time. So I've been there about 10 years, and about a year and a half or so into that, they wanted to ramp up the grant making of Cummings Foundation. It had been founded in 1986 and it was growing and they decided it was time to start giving back in a bigger way and establish a formal grant making program. So Bill and I had been working closely. Also, I had a nonprofit background, not in philanthropy, but on the, the side of nonprofits that is looking for funding. So that provided me with a good perspective to help create a program. And so we, we launched the 100K for 100 program in 2012. 2012, so it's seven years old at this point. So tell us what, well, let's go back to Bill. Bill has a favorite saying, hi, the person, not the resume. So I presume that uh, you had already fulfilled his expectations <laughs> uh, in your other work. Um, yes, that is a philosophy of, of bills and that Cummings properties and uh, my story is, is not too unusual like Cummings that you, you get your foot in the door one way and then the organization really wants to find out what people's strengths are and uh, is very flexible in, in finding the right role. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it worked out well that, uh, that I, I had the background in philanthropy and the writing skills they were looking for and it was just one, one thing led to another. Another. Yeah, and you've got a large collection of people who have been there 20 and 30 years as well. Right? We do. Even I think at this point we have about five people who've been there more than 40 years now. For yeah. And the company this year in 2020 celebrates its 50th anniversary. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now let's start with the, uh, well let's start with the, his overall philanthropic view. You say it started in 1986. How did he fund it? What was the idea behind it at that point? Sure. At that time, it was pretty traditional. He and his wife, Joyce, wanted to start giving back. He had founded Cummings Properties in 1970. It was doing well. And so, as a lot of business owners do, they decided we'll take a percentage of the revenue each year, move it over to the foundation for charitable purposes. But then at some point, they decided they wanted to do even more and so they started donating actual buildings to the foundation mm -hmm. and um, that allowed them to to ramp up the philanthropy but to maintain Cummings properties mm -hmm. um, some business owners in a similar situation might sell off buildings to get funding to then Fund give a away stock to portfolio nonprofits. portfolio or something like that uh, sure sure and the foundation does have a stock portfolio as well mm -hmm. uh, but rather than selling buildings um, to then generate cash for philanthropy they decided we'll donate them to the foundation um, so the foundation has those assets the rent from those buildings now goes directly right. to the foundation um, right. and 
then he's able to maintain Cummings Properties because mm -hmm. Cummings Properties is the management company for all the foundation owned buildings. Mm -hmm. um, it, it provides those services without charging any management fees. So all the employees who helped him build the company retain their jobs, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we feel like our leasing clients feel, feel a little better about paying their rent, which no one likes to do, mm -hmm. but, but they know <laughs> that uh, their mm -hmm. rent is actually going to charitable purposes. So this is an enormous opportunity to sustain the overall value and the net worth and subsequently then greater amount of donations that can come out of the foundation. Absolutely, yes. And, and the idea is for the foundation to continue on in perpetuity and having those real estate assets will allow us to do that. Right. And keeping with inflation, rents naturally go up, mm -hmm. therefore contributions to the foundation will go up. Absolutely. So he started in 86. Um, now he also joined the pledge, which is... Yes. Tell us about the pledge. Sure. So Instead the, of me telling about <laughs> The Giving Pledge was created by Warren Buffett and Bill and Melinda Gates in 2010. And they wanted to encourage the world's wealthiest individuals to be more philanthropic. And so when you join the pledge, it's not a, a binding legal document, but you submit a written pledge to commit to donate at least half of your assets to philanthropic purposes either during your lifetime or upon your death. And Joyce and Bill heard about that and they had been giving very quietly up until that point. Um, but they had already donated about 90% of their assets to the foundation. So they had already fulfilled that. And, Bill um, and Joyce had already done this prior to the, the pledge exactly, even existing. Right? Exactly. Um, and so, uh, again, they had really flown under the radar because they had given so quietly, but they decided that um, their, their preference for privacy was trumped by a feeling that maybe they could do even more good by making this public pledge and encouraging other people mm -hmm. to give in whatever way they can. Some people can do that financially, other people can do it by sharing their time, their expertise. And so, uh, so they did that in 2011 and uh, it was, it was really interesting when that happened. I uh, was working in my communications capacity with the Boston Globe on a story about their joining the pledge. They were the first Massachusetts couple. Mm -hmm. And it took a few weeks for that story to come to fruition because the Globe was a little skeptical because they had never no. heard of Cummings <laughs> Foundation. And they had to call around and they Who really did guy? their due diligence. <laughs> um, and the, they said that, you know, this isn't a story about them joining the pledge. This is a story about this large foundation in Woburn that no one has ever heard of before. Right. Started by one guy in the region his whole life. Yes. I had a bottling company at one point, I think, but for 4000 sold it for a million yes, six years old later. Yes, Foods, right, <laughs> yeah, right. So it did. It wound up being a front page above the fold story, and um, uh, many of Bill and Joyce's friends were very surprised when, when they saw the story. They, of course, knew they were comfortable, but, but had no idea that they were in a category that would put them in the giving pledge. Well, he makes the joke about golf balls, but I did play with them one time, I think, in a Woburn Business Association and uh, uh, golf tournament, and he did pick up a couple of balls that he found. Oh, in I, I believe it. Absolutely. <laughs> now, one of the interesting things is about his progeny is children. Now, normally, children of a billionaire, you know, are very, uh, you know, they want that money. Uh, but it seems as though uh, Bill's children are also signed on into this thing and, and you know, are happy with it. They're incredibly supportive, yes. Um, Bill and Joyce have provided for them over the years, and at a certain point, the, the children actually made large donations back to the foundation because they said, you know, we, we just don't need these funds. Other people need them more. Mm -hmm. um, Joyce and Bill live a relatively modest lifestyle, and their, their kids do as well. Mm -hmm. They're, I know we downsized over him. He had a, uh, a mm -hmm. place in Winchester and downsized, right? They, they did, that's mm -hmm. right, yes. They mm -hmm. are... Um, I can't not, imagine them living in a three-bedroom ranch, but uh, yes, uh, I mean it's yeah. They have a nice house, but uh, it's not a mansion. They have nice cars, but they're not buying Lamborghinis and mm -hmm. yachts. Um, they mm -hmm. they have maintain essentially the same lifestyle that he had. 40 years ago. Exactly, yes, and, mm -hmm. and the, he often says that they have the same friends that they had 40 mm -hmm. years ago. Right. They, they don't run in the, the, the social circles of, uh, you know, the Boston gala scene. Mm -hmm. they, um, they 
have their, their good friends and, and are the same people they've been for decades. Right. Well, speaking of good friends, uh, his loyalty at this point, I guess, is legendary when we talk about Jamie <clears throat> McEwen and, and Doug. Doug, Doug Stevens. Stevens. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the commitment to the Woven Y and Doug Stevens uh, up in Beverly. Rest in peace, both of them. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, both um, are, were extremely important to the Cummings organization and are, right. are still remembered very fondly. Jamie was um, was Bill's successor. He was the, the first president of the organization other than Bill. Um, 32, he, I believe, at the time, wasn't he? He, he was 41 when he passed 40. away. Okay, so um, he tragically, job, he had yeah. a heart attack. Right. And um, and uh, he has been memorialized in, in a number of ways since mm -hmm. then. It was a huge loss for the company, for the community. Um, there were McEwen scholarships in his name for many years at area schools. And then most recently, uh, the Cummings organization made a substantial donation to the Woburn Boys and Girls Club to rename that yeah. Yeah. Uh, to the McEwen Boys and Girls Club. They were doing a big, big renovation. Jamie uh, essentially grew up at the club. He was a, a, boy, boy. Of the year. He was a boy of the year. He sure. was president of the board, so mm -hmm. it was very important right. in his life. And so we were honored to, to make a donation to, to name the club after right. him. I had interviewed him 35 years ago yes. on that subject. Uh, and it's quite a legacy for them that that place is just fantastic. I was it over is. there for a basketball tournament. It, yeah. They do wonderful work there. Right. Now, Doug was his, uh, his uh, chief of finance, financial yes. officer. Yes. Uh, tell us about he that. He was treasurer. He was the first executive vice president of the company. Uh, he was our first employee to be with the company for, for 30 years. We have a chair, the Stevens chair, named after him that all employees get now when they are with us for 30 years. He also passed away and um, after that we made a $1 million donation to the YMCA in Beverly to create the Doug Stevens Teen Center in his mm -hmm. name. Before we go through the application process and who might qualify for it, et cetera, let's talk about some of the other projects. Uh, there's uh, the Choke Building was his project, the Tufts Medical Center uh, was his project, uh, the, he's working in Rwanda. So tell us about some of those projects. Sure. So uh, Cummings Foundation actually owns and operates two um, senior living communities, New Horizons at Choate, which is the at the former Choate Memorial Hospital in Woburn, and uh, later we created New Horizons at Marlboro. They're not not-for-profit retirement communities. Um, so and they were rehabbed old buildings. What was the Marlboro building? Was that a health, uh, health facility as well? It was actually, it was a school for girls that was run by uh, the Sisters of the Good Shepherd. Mm -hmm. And so we purchased the community from the sisters, turned it into assisted and independent living, and Bill invited the sisters to remain on the campus rent-free. Um, and um, several years ago now, built them a, a new convent because their, their numbers were shrinking. Mm -hmm. So uh, traded spaces with them, built them a nice new, convent um, so that was a wonderful relationship um, so we have the New Horizons communities we have a wonderful relationship with Tufts Bill is an alum Mm -hmm. And uh, feels feels very good about his education, his experience there, and so has become a major benefactor. Um, well, that was somewhere in the order of thirty or forty million dollars, wasn't it? Uh, originally, he made a, a fifty million dollar gift to uh, Tufts Veterinary School, which is now the Cummings School of Veterinary Medicine. <laughs> fifty million dollar gift. Yes, <laughs> and that that giving has continued. I think we're north of seventy million now to um, to the school, uh, the Cummings School. It's the only veterinary school in New England that's a, a wonderful mm -hmm. institution and uh, and really it was just where Tufts needed the money at the time um, as opposed to a, a strong connection with with animals or the the school uh, it was a um, connection from an academic standpoint uh, correct yes mm -hmm. yeah and so that's a wonderful relationship that's ongoing and um, while most of our work is in 
the greater Boston area, we also have a special interest in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And most recently, we funded the uh, phase one of University of Global Health Equity, which is a, a brand new school of health sciences. Um, Bill and Joyce had actually proposed the idea after a couple of visits to Rwanda. They mm -hmm. saw that uh, there was a real need for healthcare professionals. There's right. a real well, he had a connection with a particular doctor who had a lot of experience there, didn't he? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Partners in Health. Um, founded by Dr. Paul Farmer. Okay, so they had visited right. mm -hmm. uh, Partners in Health hospitals there and it proposed the idea to Dr. Farmer and, and some other um, individuals within Partners in Health and the government and uh, that was several years ago and now the the university has opened. Bill and Joyce went to Rwanda about a year ago for the dedication ceremony. Um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, worked with us for that initial funding so it was wonderful to have them involved and mm -hmm. it's really exciting that it's the university is now open and it's it's flourishing quite a dynamic combination okay so let's go to uh, more specifics in terms of you rolled out this hundred for a hundred and when I read it I didn't really do the math uh, but tell us what hundred for a hundred was sure so uh, so we started with the hundred K for 100 program and essentially we were each year awarding 100 grants of $100,000 each, so that's totaling $10 million. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we look to support the local community. We want to support the areas where the funds came from, so the areas where our buildings were are, are located, including uh, here in Burlington, mm -hmm. where we have 101 Cambridge Street. Mm -hmm. And we also want to support the communities where the staff and clients of the Cummings organization live. And so our uh, geography is, is our primary parameter. So the staff, actually, where they reside, are, are part of a focus of the, of the grant program. Well, that, um, that led us to create a priority area of Middlesex, Essex, and Suffolk County. Mm -hmm. So, um, so organizations need to be located in that area and also provide the majority of their services there. So we're looking for really local companies, mm -hmm. local organizations. Mm -hmm. So that grew. Now it's uh, that's been going on since what 2012. It started in 2012, right. and then a few years ago we added the sustaining grants program because we realized that fundraising is just a never-ending battle mm -hmm. for nonprofits. And our 100K grants, many of them we do over multiple years, so it might be 50,000 for two years or 25,000 mm -hmm. for four years. But we decided that we were going to award grants lasting 10 years so you know grants from 200,000 to half a million dollars over 10 years um, to, to lift that burden and so the organizations could rely on that funding. Okay so that then ex is now up to 20 million dollars when you combine the 100 for 100 plus the sustaining grants. Yes and and this year we we merged the programs mm -hmm. uh, to create one program which we're calling the Cummings 20 million dollar grant program so um, this current cycle started in July of 2019 and we'll be awarding a total of 125 grants 100 of them will be for a hundred thousand dollars and the other 25 will be 10-year grants of varying amounts that will total $10 million. $10 million. Okay, well, let's start with uh, who's eligible. Uh, we know from the geographic standpoint, uh, but are there various services that you prefer mm -hmm. or uh, that, that uh, take preference, or is it anybody who falls under the 501c3 category? Sure. Um, organizations do need to have 501c3 status, uh, meet our geographic parameters. Beyond that, we're, we're pretty broad, but we tend to focus more on basic services. So we fund a lot of human services, education, health care, social justice. Um, we don't do as much of arts, athletics, environment. Not that they're not wonderful causes, mm -hmm. but we learn that you, to be effective, you need to set 
some parameters mm -hmm. as it is considering how local an area we work in. This year we received 738 letters of inquiry. Um, okay, so letter of inquiry, I know we've, we're always mentioning coming to any of our 501c3 here. Always to, hey, get your application over. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is the process, a letter of inquiry, and how has that grown since 2012? I presume mm -hmm. 723 is, is your tops at the moment. It, it, it was a record-setting year, <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, in 2012 when we started, 2012 was really our pilot year, mm -hmm. so we didn't advertise it very much. We just put up a page on the website. We told some organizations that we know, and we received about 200 applications. Mm -hmm. um, word tends to spread spread quickly, quickly when, when new funding is available. <laughs> when people need money, yeah. Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, and it has grown since then um, to the 738 this year. So we ask organizations first to submit a letter of inquiry, which is a pretty brief, one to two pages. We're looking for who are you, what do you do, and, and what is the need that you have. And, and your focus, perhaps, and also your expansionary plans, that type of thing? Yes. Well, uh, what would you use the funding for? Mm -hmm. um, and we try to keep it pretty brief uh, because it's it's a lot of work to put these applications together. The So we start with the letter of inquiry. We have wonderful volunteers who work with us. We have a system that has evolved quite a bit over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a committee who reads the letters of inquiry and they make some tough decisions to select the most promising letters. And this year of the 738, we invited about 320 to submit full applications. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are now in the process. So you're in a weaning process. How big is the yes. committee that's going to read through, you know, 1,400, 1,500 pages of info <laughs> uh, uh, on an application process? So, so we have a separate committee that will read the full applications, and every application is read by two volunteers, and each volunteer will read about 30 or so applications, mm -hmm. and, um, and two people read them independently, and then they come together, discuss them, and they need to agree on uh, which ones are going to move forward in the process, because then there's one more committee, our final grant selection committee, and for that one, we have 10 committees, four people each. They receive a batch of 15 or so applications, read them, and select about half to receive grants. And do you have a presentation process at some point in time when you winnow down to, mm -hmm. say, 150? Do they come before the full committee and make the make a pitch, essentially? Right. For the, we will do that for the organizations that are being considered for the 10-year funding. Mm -hmm. For the grants of $100,000 each, it's purely based on the application, mm -hmm. but the final step in the process this year will be for those organizations considered for long-term funding. They'll be invited in to make a presentation, talk with a panel of volunteers, answer questions to help mm -hmm. make those decisions. Now, particularly in the sustaining program, um, is there a review process in terms of the financial wherewithal of these comp uh, these 501c3s? Is there a monitoring or an audit process? Do they submit those to you to maintain their sustaining grant? Right. We uh, For the selection process, we do request a, a budget. Uh, we do look at their 990s and financials. We do some of that internally, but we've been very fortunate in recent years to work with um, LGA, Lipman Gerson, uh, which is an accounting firm. It's been a long-term client in West Cummings Park in Woburn, and they have provided pro bono assistance. They have wonderful expertise in this area to help us review those financials. So you can also get that information from the Secretary of State if they're right. in good standing. Yeah, exactly. And we, we look at, at a, a few years and we want to ensure that an organization is is on solid footing. Mm -hmm. Ideally, we're, we're looking to support organizations. Um, it's mostly small and medium organizations mm -hmm. that we support and we want our funds to really have an impact. impact yeah. We want to help them get to the next level, introduce a no, new program, serve more people when there's a need for that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, But it's not meant to be life support for a struggling organization. Right, right. Or to bail somebody out who's got a negative balance. Uh, exactly. Balance. Now, uh, they get to the final process, and that includes the four-member committee that has reviewed it, or is that the entire committee of the 40 that have reviewed them? 
Um, so, so the final step is uh, each application is read by four people. And like at the other steps, they read them independently, then they come together. And, uh, and we have amazing volunteers. Um, it started with our trustees and grew from there. We have community leaders business owners, some uh, clients of the Cummings organization so they can see where their rent dollars are going, going sure. Fed College presidents, um, and people who bring a lot of different perspectives. And it's a really interesting experience for them to then come together and, and they have their idea about which one should get the grant, but then they hear some different perspectives uh, and it's very, very eye-opening. But it's, it's also very challenging mm -hmm. uh, because when it, sure. by the time it gets to that point, these are all fabulous organizations doing, doing important right work. Sure. Um, so it's not right or wrong, black and white. They're really judgment calls by mm -hmm. that point. Now, um, going forward, you mentioned in perpetuity, this is really a, an organization that can grow in perpetuity. I mean, sub how substantial can this be in a decade? More substantial is the word, I guess. Yes, uh, that's a great question. The foundation has, has grown quite a bit over the years. We expect that it will continue to grow. Um, we don't have a, a plan for 10 years out what it will look like, but we do revisit our grant programs every year and look at them and make changes mm -hmm. and, um, and and think about what, what we need to do in terms of, of granting funds and how we can, can adjust accordingly. Is Bill going to put up any more buildings that he's going to put into the foundation? Uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, I think things are always changing at Cummings. Uh, right now, we're doing a lot of work in, in Beverly at, sure, at Denham Ridge. Sure, I remember Ridge. the shoe. Nobody believed he could do anything with the shoe, Yes, right? yes. And now up the road from that, we have Dunham Ridge, a brand new campus that's mm -hmm. being developed. So, um, so there's always something new going on. It's a very fluid organization. Let's get right to the heart of the matter and talk about what are you doing in Burlington? Uh, and the surrounding areas for, for uh, 501c3s. What sure. What grants have you done? Sure. Here? So we have awarded uh, about $1.8 million in Burlington in recent years. Mm -hmm. We've been thrilled to do that. We have uh, awarded grants to the Burlington Council on Aging, which does great work. We've awarded a couple of grants to Burlington Police Department uh, for a mobile command unit so mm -hmm. they can um, respond to local crises and be better equipped for that. And also for uh, a mental health uh, staff member, which is, is so important, especially these days. Um, we have also supported um, Leahy Health Foundation in a substantial way. And um, you mentioned the Downs Congress. Could Massachusetts you Down Syndrome Congress is a fantastic organization right. that is headquartered in Burlington, and they. Which I'm sure none of us out there in Pecat <coughs> Land knew that that. Uh, well, may maybe they did, but I certainly didn't know uh, that they were located here in Burlington. Yes, they do great work supporting families who have a member affected by Down syndrome, um, providing various resources mm -hmm. for them. So we're, we're proud to support them. They received a $100,000 grant and then a sustaining grant. So we'll have a, a long-term relationship. Great. Thanks for that lead. You set us up for a B News Weekly special somewhere down the line. Excellent. We'll have to get in touch with them. So what's the future bring? I mean, uh, are you ultimately a deputy director? I mean, this must be getting close to a full-time position. Are you... <laughs> moving away from some of your other duties and in, in going into uh, this 100%? You know, I feel very fortunate to be able to work on both sides of the organization. So I'm, I'm still technically employed by Cummings Properties as Director of Communications and Marketing and still serve in a pro bono capacity as Deputy Director of the Foundation. Pro bono, that never sounds good for a worker. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's Cummings that's making the donation yeah, right. of my time. Right. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, any closing comments that you would like to make for us? Uh, uh, any advice? Any? I, I noticed that Bill never makes a plea. I never get a fundraising letter in the in the mail from Bill saying, "Please donate." That's I, I right. wonder why. That's <laughs> right. Yes, the foundation is, is not in the business of raising funds, but in in granting funds. So uh, we encourage organizations to check out CummingsFoundation.org to learn more about our grant program, see if they might be eligible. We'll be opening up again for letters of inquiry in July. Mm -hmm. And uh, also I'd be remiss not to encourage people
people to think of Cummings Properties when they have a need for commercial real estate mm -hmm. because it is the properties that are allowing us to do this important work. So, um, so please contact us if we can help you. Right. Now, what about the uh, announcement of uh, are you doing a grand, uh, what, what, is there a grand finale to the application process where everybody uh, comes we, and cheers? We actually, we have a grant winner celebration oh, okay. um, in June, which is a phenomenal event. Uh, it's the happiest group of people you'll ever have in, well, in one room. Well, you characterized it in a much fancier way than I did. I yeah. apologize. <laughs> That's fine. But <laughs> Is an opportunity for the uh, grant winners to celebrate together mm -hmm. also to connect with Bill and Joyce personally right. um, and we tried to provide them with lots of tools to uh, promote their grant so that then they can leverage that to hopefully uh, get additional funding yeah. from other supporters not to mention a fantastic networking opportunity for those who are involved in those types of businesses. absolutely right. absolutely it's great. a wonderful evening great Okay, unfortunately, we've run out of time. I'd like to thank our guest, Joyce Mariotis, who is the Deputy Director of the Cummings Foundation. Thank you very much, and good luck in the future. Thank you very much.